Hello, and welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, a program part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. Our topic today uh, takes us into a somewhat new realm, uh, some of the challenges we encounter in thyroid pathology. Um, this uh, case is that of a very uh, able woman, but uh, advanced in years. Uh, who has developed a thyroid mass and come to uh, clinical attention. Uh, needle aspiration was performed and uh, ultrasound and so forth, and the clinical and radiographic characteristics seemed to indicate the need for surgery, so she came to resection. Uh, I believe the FNA was performed at an outside institution, and then she was referred to our department, um, which has an excellent reputation uh, for head and neck surgery. But when we think about thyroid lesions in the very elderly, I think it's important to recognize that age does affect the kinds of things we're going to anticipate. Uh, in general, hypothyroidism increases with age uh, and hence the uh, uh, tropic uh, drive uh, also goes up in those patients, which may impact ne neoplastic propensity. Uh, because as we look at the thyroid nodules that occur in uh, the elderly, uh, the ratios change significantly over uh, the last several decades of life. Um, and poorly differentiated and even undifferentiated malignancies tend, uh, increase in frequency with this age group. Additionally, we see more follicular neoplasms than uh, papillary neoplasms. Uh, and uh, in some circumstances, we will also see uh, lymphoma and other lesions uh, increase uh, in propensity. So. Uh, that's to set you up for uh, this case, uh, which is a, a somewhat unusual and uh, uh, novel case uh, that's certainly not encountered commonly on the thyroid surgical uh, bench. So we can see that we've got some vessels, we've got a, a tumor uh, process here, we've got tumor over here, and we've of course inked it to evaluate our margins. So let's go down here and see uh, what we've got here. Uh, looking at this neoplasm, it appears to be mostly solid. Uh, we see some sclerotic uh, tissue in between uh, and a lot of very solid uh, nests of cells. Uh, looking at these a little more closely, uh, you get a little sense that maybe there's even a little keratinization type of change in some of these cells. Uh, they certainly have uh, uh, malignant appearing nuclei, mitotic activity, um, and a mostly solid appearance, uh, uh, which we would probably uh, call a, a, almost a, a squamoid or an epidermoid uh, type of uh, tumor. Uh, so that's certainly not something we uh, think of most commonly in the, in the thyroid, uh, but uh, such cases uh, occur. And uh, as I tell our residents, since we live in the zoo, you don't always just see horses. Uh, sometimes you'll see uh, uh, various uh, unusual uh, components. Uh, looking around a little further, uh, we'll see that there's a, because uh, if we've got an epidermoid component, we certainly would wonder about uh, other components as well. And so looking for any sort of mucoid component uh, to go along with uh, that might be uh, of, of note. Um, we do see here a little suggestion of sort of some cleft-like spaces and uh, a little bit different architecture here. Um, looking a little further, take a look over in here. And see it just again, a little bit more of this epidermoid type component. Coming down to this section over here, um, we see that we have uh, a little bit more glandular and cleft-like spaces and sort of a papillary architecture. Um, and in fact, uh, we've got nice stromal hyalinization of these uh, fibrovascular cores. Uh, and we have these cuboidal epithelial cells lining uh, these papillae. Um, and if you can, uh, uh, take my word for it, uh, you've got uh, nuclear atypia and a few uh, intranuclear inclusions, some grooving. Uh, you've got features here to suggest that you have, at least in this component, 
papillary carcinoma as well. Uh, so uh, that's an unusual uh, finding, uh, but may uh, correspond to, to, to what's going on. Uh, we'll look at another slide here um, uh, taken from the tumor, um, just to give us a little bit of a, additional insight into this tumor. Here again, we see mostly solid tumor. Uh, obviously, it was somewhat difficult to, to get out. Uh, we've got quite a bit of fragmentation of the sample. Um, and again, we see this very solid and anastomosing cords of uh, epithelioid cells, a little bit of squamous type differentiation. Here's some uh, residual thyroid epithelium, some lymphoid tissue, calcification in the vessels as we expect with an elderly patient. high-grade nuclei. And we'll go up into this area here as well. Uh, we've got some areas that look a little different here. So we've got some clear cells here. Uh, could again still be epidermoid, a little bit of keratinization there. And then a little bit further up here, I think we'll find more of this tumor. Well, of course, what we're trying to find is the uh, evidence of the uh, mucoid component. Uh, and it's not unusual uh, that uh, sometimes that's a little bit difficult to find. Maybe you can see a few cells here that suggest a little bit of that. Um, sometimes we have to imagine that a little bit. Um, and that's where sometimes special stains can come in. Um, because even after exhaustive, exhaustive search in a large tumor, you may miss uh, areas that are obviously uh, uh, mucoid uh, or have that mucoepidermoid uh, component to it. We'll go down here to this one other area here and see if we've got... Here we can see some mitotic activity. More mitoses. Well, let's, uh, let's uh, sort of uh, go the easy route and let's take a look at a special stain. So mucicarmine is a very good stain. And by golly, even at low magnification, I can say, oh, there's something right there. It's a little bit red. Maybe you got a few more things over here. So let's just go where the money is here. And here we see actually two foci. Um, so is this specific staining uh, yes, look at how we have cytoplasmic blush to some of these cells. Uh, this is uh, true staining, not uh, false uh, positive background staining. Here we see a little droplet and intracytoplasmic uh, mucin. Uh, we have confirmed our diagnosis of a mucoepidermoid component uh, to this tumor. And as we look around, we can see more areas where we have this uh, change as well. So. Uh, just take a little further look to verify uh, what, is the, what is the other dominant component. Well, this is a P63 stain, and as we can see, it's uh, nicely highlighting the nuclei on a, on a vast majority of this uh, tumor. So the majority of this tumor is a mucoepidermoid carcinoma. We have a minor component of papillary thyroid carcinoma that is uh, adjacent to it. Um, and so in the head and neck region, uh, we have to wonder, is this a collision tumor? tumor in the thyroid, tumor in the salivary gland, uh, tracheal gland, or uh, is this a mucoepidermoid carcinoma arising from a uh, papillary thyroid carcinoma? Um, and uh, it doesn't really matter too much uh, in that regard. Uh, certainly this needs to be treated as a mucoepidermoid component, but we want to bear in mind that uh, thyroid po possibility. Um, 
it's uh, certainly been reported in this situation that these things can occur. And of course, uh, the typical uh, evaluation, evaluation protocol in this day and age includes an FNA, um, which presents some interesting challenges as you can think of uh, this uh, case. Uh, and just based on the relative proportions that I've shown you, you can imagine that uh, depending on where that needle went, you might have had both components or you might not. Um, so here's an example, a case uh, reported by Dr. Nath and his colleagues from uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, and uh, they identified uh, pr prospectively uh, a nice uh, component of papillary thyroid carcinoma here. We can see the nice uh, uh, orphan Annie type nuclei clearing, nuclear clearing and so forth. Uh, but they had difficulty uh, on the initial evaluation identifying the epidermoid component until uh, they had the surgical specimen and went back. And sure enough, there were some squamoid elements and on rare inspection, a few uh, mucin droplets that uh, corresponded to that as well. So um, uh, the FNA may be helpful or you, it may still hold a few surprises when you uh, come to the final diagnosis. So that's our case for today. Uh, mucoepidermoid carcinoma arising in papillary thyroid carcinoma occurring in the neck in a very elderly uh, woman. Um, and uh, certainly not the usual case you're going to run into on the thyroid bench, but you have to be prepared for what uh, can happen. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I certainly found that a fascinating case. And if you like that, uh, please subscribe so that uh, you'll be able to catch on to future videos. And we'd welcome your comments and thoughts about uh, co combined or collision tumors that you may have encountered uh, and uh, how you sorted those out and whether or not the pre-op evaluation with FNA was helpful or, or not. Um, so until next time, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you then.